question number three. Let's come back to this notion of filters. What are the pros and the cons if I want to apply a firmographic or a demographic filter to a content syndication program? There actually are pros and cons. I mean, coming from a publisher, we, we're not a big fan of the multiple filters, but I do encourage them sometimes because uh, filters actually add good strategic help to eliminate waste and expenses. Um, you know, something we'll get into in a little bit later is that bad content syndication can cost you money. And that's not a good thing. So we do encourage that you do add filters such as you don't want to target your competitors and marketers. Um, that's an addition of what we would call an exclusion list add, added on to the syndication campaign. You want to remove people that you would never engage with, right? Marketers, sales professionals, um, in some cases, uh, or just, you know, standard filtering, uh, for instance, if you have a very extensive channel extension offering and you're an enterprise marketer, you definitely want to focus on maybe more of an enterprise targeting. Things like that are good ways of adding filtering that can avoid expenses in the future. The cons of filtering sometimes though, and, and we have seen this on a lot of cases, people get really carried away with filtering, actually is, you know, you can eliminate active buyers that are researching your project and you could be alienating people. We find that in IT purchasing a lot of times, and this happens with job function filtering and um, named account list or ABM targeting, which are good things. In some cases, you want to add that maybe as an additional special target. But as far as filtering is concerned, sometimes if you get too carried away with those type of filters, you could be alienating some of the other people that are actively researching and or looking at your content. And especially in today's market, you want to make sure that you're being aware of where your white space lies or people necessarily that similar, the target that you're going after, but maybe don't meet your named account list or job function filters that your salespeople highlight as, you know, their quality that they want um, the greatest. Uh, so filtering can be very tricky. You definitely want to add some of it to make sure that you're not developing waste, but not add too much filtering so that you're not alienating people who actually want to talk to you and purchase from you. Okay, two quick follow-ups. The first, are there standard filters that I should expect are always applied on content syndication leads? Yes, I would definitely, uh, you know, always apply, and this is a very standard thing, is you're focusing especially in the B2B technology market. You probably want to target IT professionals. Um, a lot of people add line of business to that. So that basically eliminates sales and marketing and consultants as a standard practice. Also, you probably normally, unless you're targeting them specially, want to eliminate targeting the channel because those people are going to be your potential partners, not necessarily going to be purchasing from you. Those are pretty standard filters that we see uh, with all campaigns. Okay, second follow-up question. Is it fair to say the more and tougher filters that I apply to a campaign, the higher the cost per lead? That is correct. Uh, usually, uh, you know, standard uh, CPL differentiations can come from the more that you target. So for instance, if you are targeting something that eliminates 90% of your audience, CPLs could double uh, or even triple in some cases, um, depending on your targeting. So you want to create that balance and sometimes you can even price yourself out of your targeting.